over half a million subscribers on one channel. Wow. Then I had another channel with like 200,000 subscribers. And I'm like, yo, I'm starting to get spread thin. How do I figure out yeah. a way to operate this business without it demanding so much of me? That was like my first dive into YouTube automation. And it's crazy because that's where I saw the most success I had ever seen on YouTube. I had made $68,000 in a single month. You're actually able to do YouTube without creating videos or ever showing your face or yeah. without ever requiring your time. It has to work or it has to work. Welcome to another episode of Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis. And today we got something super special, right? So you, we know about Facebook, right? We know about Google, right? We know Google owns YouTube. and. Y'all probably watching this on YouTube. This is one of the number one searched channels in the world, like YouTube. Everybody go to YouTube to do everything. So I had to come on here and bring a YouTube goat to literally show us how to get crazy with YouTube and coach me how we could just do better on YouTube. So without further ado, man, I ought to bring my guy, David Amari. What up, bro? What's going on, bro? Chilling, bro. How you feeling, man? man yeah. I'm feeling great, man. man. Just ready to get some gaming really put people on about this platform. Cause like you said, it's like one of the number one searched platforms in the world right now, yeah. second behind Google, but because Google owns it, yeah. it's just amazing. It's so. a no brainer, bro. It's a no brainer, yeah. bro. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. So bro, tell the backs, cause I want people to understand, like you went from, you, you, you joined my mastermind, mm -hmm. went crazy. Like I'm talking about, you brought nothing but value to the mastermind, right? Right. Um, you learned a bunch of stuff, right? And even all while you're learning all these things, you were literally coaching us on YouTube what to do, what not to do, how to yeah. set this up, thumbnails, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how did you actually find me? Because I still think that's still like, you, so yeah, that was I found. Cool. So so the first time I saw you it was funny. I saw a YouTube ad. Yeah. And uh, you know, he was walking into the mansion. Yeah. Da, 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 and yeah. then I just tapped in from there, and then I saw you on a podcast on YouTube, and so I was just like, man, like. He everywhere on YouTube, I gotta yeah. tap in with him. Yeah. And then from there, bro, I just kinda knew you from there. Just yeah. just them YouTube ads and just yeah. YouTube organic in general. So yeah. it's powerful, man. It's powerful, bro. It's and powerful, I, I just want, I just gotta commend you on your execution, bro. Um, appreciate just what you're doing. Appreciate you being in this space, showing people how mm -hmm. to, people have been making millions and millions from YouTube for years. Yeah. And I feel like you are the person to come back and show everyone else how to go do it now. Yeah. Like, here's yeah. how you do it. Thumbnails. This is what you need to do. Yeah. Here's how you build a team. Yeah. Literally, you created a formula, right, to show people how to really go crazy on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say just the other day, like you showed David one of your YouTube channels. You made over a million dollars off of the YouTube channel. Yeah, bro. Faceless, though. Faceless. Not even my face, my voice. They didn't yeah. create any of the videos. Just really managed it and orchestrated the whole play. Yeah. And uh, it was funny, he was reading the number and he, he was reading the amount of views. It was actually a billion views on that channel, man. And, wow. and he was just like mind blowing yeah. and just kind of like trying to figure out like, yo, how did you do this? Yeah. And so it really just all started like, you know, fresh out of high school. Cause I've been doing this for about a decade. I don't know if I ever told you the backstory, yeah. but- Tell me about it, yeah. Fresh out of high school, you know, I was playing with it. First I was doing sneaker content, but I realized, you know, if I wanted to scale a business, me buying Jordans every week to make a video wasn't gonna help me scale the business, right? So yeah. I said, why not, you know, put my own flavor with gaming on it where I don't gotta show my face, yeah. right? And at the time I was editing my own videos, just kinda, you know, getting my, my feet wet with the business. And then eventually, you know, I ended up having over half a million subscribers on one channel. Wow. Then I had another channel with like 200,000 subscribers. Wow. And I'm like, yo, I'm starting to get spread thin. How do I figure out yeah. a way to operate this business without it demanding so much of me, right? I was already hiring video editors yeah. to handle some stuff on my other channels, trying to get myself out of the process, yeah. but I never really completely just took myself out of the equation. Yeah. And so then that's when I discovered the business model YouTube automation where yeah. you're actually able to do YouTube without creating videos or ever showing your face or yeah. without ever requiring your time. So that happened with me. And my when was that? When was that? So that was in like 2018. Got it. Right. Got it. And so yeah. that business endeavor, that was like my first dive into YouTube automation. And it's crazy because that's where I saw the most success I had ever seen on YouTube. Wow. Right. And, and I feel like what really motivated me to go crazy was wifey came home one day from work or I came home one day from work. You know, we had our one bedroom apartment in LA and, you know, I was doing my thing, still working a nine to five. And I was just talking to her and she was like, hey, I got something to tell you. And so she showed me a pregnancy test. Yeah. And when she showed me a pregnancy test, man, I was like, yo, 
I got to figure out a way to get this money by tomorrow. Right. So she showed me the pregnancy test and I saw the opportunity to really take YouTube to the next level. Like at this point, I'm like, look, I got to figure out a way to go bigger and better. So then when I dived into YouTube automation, I kid you not, bro, the first month after I found out she was pregnant, that first month, I had my biggest month on YouTube. I had made $68,000 in a single month. And the craziest Just part- Just from YouTube ads? Bro, not even ads, AdSense, I mean, organic, but YouTube, YouTube AdSense, AdSense yeah. 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 But it was it's all organic. What AdSense is just so they understand. So, that. basically, what Google AdSense is is when you have a YouTube video, you are able once your channel is monetized to put advertisements on that video. You're able to place mid-row ads. Every single time somebody watches that ad, you get a dollar amount, right? So for every thousand views, let's just say, for example, you get paid $10, okay? If you get a million views on that video or even on that channel for that entire 30-day period, you just made $10,000 essentially, right? Your CPMs and RPMs can range from different numbers depending on who you're targeting, but in layman's terms, it's basically the dollar amount that you're getting on a CPM and it gets so paid out to CPMs your- CPM means- Right, <laughs> I got you. So the CPM mm -hmm. basically is just your cost per milestone or cost per milius in French and then your revenue per milestone, which is your RPM number, which is what you take home, right? And so how that also works is once you get that payout from those views, Google basically has this thing called Google AdSense where you're able to get the money from that account and directly deposit it into your account. So my Google Assets account, 68,000. And the crazy part is that was like the first YouTube automation channel, like everything else was me doing it before just on my own. And so that happened after I decided to jump into it. And so fast forward, you know, six months into my wife being pregnant, I just came home one day and was like, look, I'm not going back to work and you're not either, mm. right? Like YouTube changed my entire life. Wow. And it, it all started from just like, you know, a single video idea that I had and just a, a passion that I have for gaming and just kind of making that thing. So, yeah. yeah, man, YouTube's been crazy for me. That's crazy. So would you say one of the first things is you have to have interest in game, right? You need to find a niche, right? Is right. that what, what would you say if I, I want to get in YouTube automation? How am I discovering what niche do I am I searching this a certain way? Right. And so. Like, the thing about it today, nowadays, with YouTube automation, you kind of want to take you out of the process, yeah. right? At the beginning, I was doing my passion, and yes, that led to a lot of success, but it wasn't always successful. I eventually had to make another channel, create other you know, niche channels, and make other topics and make money from those topics, right? Because I noticed that gaming, although I got a billion views on that channel, bro, only made a million dollars. Now, that's, a, that's amazing. A million dollars yeah. is a lot of money, but... Think about it. If it was in a business niche or if it was targeting a different audience that wasn't children, I probably would have made $10 million from those views. Wow. So that's what motivated me to say, yo, I got to switch it up. And so that's when I got into like the top 10 stuff. But when it comes to YouTube automation and choosing your niche, you want to take you out of, the, out of the process. So right now, I'll give you a, a really good example, right? John Morant, he, yeah. he buck wild and going crazy, right? So I might not be into the, the Memphis Grizzlies. I might not be in the, the NBA, but I know that that's a great topic. And if I can get a team to build a video for me, that's an amazing niche. I know it's going to go crazy, right? And it's the same thing, Andrew Tate, getting out of prison. There's so many different trendy niches that's going on. And that's how you really decide, like, which one do you want to go into, right? So all the niches is just choosing a topic on YouTube. Once you have that topic, you stick with it. Um, and then once you stick with it, you, you see the success and the result from it. But it's just all about relevancy. Right. If the niche is relevant enough, then, you know, you got you one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, let me ask you this, too, because you mentioned John Morant, which is an amazing player going through some stuff now. But what if you clean this up in six months? Do you just switch niches then or? So what you will do in that in that process is you can still make content about John Morant, but you would just switch it from John Morant to maybe different NBA players. Right. Got it. And so mm. maybe it not maybe not make the channel about John Morant. But just make it about NBA players top that players in top NBA. fail, top 10 NBA fails, yeah. right? Or just, just make it a broader aspect. So when you're actually making more content and that trend does die, because they do die, you have something to pivot to. Once you realize how to pivot on YouTube, you, you never can be stopped. Yeah. Because that pivot is strong and it helps you get to that, you know, that next thing, that next topic that's going to print results. What is our next step in this automation game? So we we building a team. Let's talk about it. Who is on your team? Like, what do you need to do to create a team? So it's real easy. Yeah. So with well, YouTube automation, it's just four or five components to your team. Yeah. When you're starting out, you hire a script writer. Yeah. You hire a voice actor. You hire a video editor. 
a thumbnail artist and then once you like really get you know real crafty with it you can hire a, ch hire a channel manager to take over the whole process for you right Ooh. and so they create all the aspects of the video the video editor puts it together and then after they do that you can then upload the video on youtube right yeah. but this is where the gym the gym is this is where people don't understand because they just see it from the outside looking in and they're like man i wonder like how that makes profit right and so i'll tell you like this my first youtube automation like video cost me 50 dollars yeah. to hire wow. all of those people wow and it made me ten thousand dollars wow so the profit was like crazy. It was like $10,700 yeah. or something like that, right? But you got to keep in mind, I was at a nine to five and I was just like, yo, like I'm trying to go all in, right? So I hired my team. After I got my team, I took about two, $3,000, paid off um, my bills or whatever and took $8,000 and just bought more $50 videos. Mm. So I went and bought 160 videos, wow. which equated to like 400 and like, sixty thousand dollars back yeah. off of that investment so really it was off a fifty dollar seed but let's just go back to team building like how that looks today you can still get videos for fifty dollars like right. you can still find teams because it's just like vas in our businesses yeah. right they'll take little dollars but it means a lot to them yeah it's the same with building a youtube automation team right yeah. so a script writer typically if you're trying to get a, a team that's like not super expensive you pay them fifteen dollars for a voice actor, you pay him fifteen dollars. For a video editor, you pay him fifteen dollars. And then for your thumbnail, it's so a video editor for fifteen dollars. Yes, bro. Wow, a video editor for fifteen dollars, and that video editing be good in these times. In these times, I'm telling you, wow. like I've had students yeah. go crazy. Like yeah. you know, Kev, uh, he's in the mastermind. He yeah. was in the mastermind too. He was one of my students as yeah. well. Crazy. He paid forty five dollars, five dollars less for a video. It made thirteen thousand dollars. Wow. In today's age, so crazy. it's crazy. And then that thumbnail, five dollars. There's so many freelancers yeah. competing, yeah. so they gotta charge that low dollar because they know that that's the only way I'm gonna really, you know, get spotted. And so you pay that five dollars to that thumbnail artist. They make that thumbnail, and boom, it puts a video together. But the reason why it still works in today's age because it's not necessarily the video itself. It's more so the topic. Yeah. So if something going on right now that's hot, if you got your team ready to make that video. The script, that's you can find articles, chat GPT, all that stuff can literally bullet point and like blueprint your whole script, right? Voiceover artists, people ain't really looking to hear who the, how the voice really sounds, right? Yeah. It just has to sound like an American voice or whatever it may be, right? And give the information, right? And then with a video mm -hmm. editor, anybody can literally go online, get clips of John Morant and you know, news and uh, him talking in the press conferences, put it together with a voiceover, add some background music, and in a thumbnail, like $5. So that's why I'm saying like in today's age, like it's really not yeah. right now. Typically what I pay now for a video, because I'm just super premium, like I yeah. just like the best of the yeah. best, I'll spend like anywhere from three to $400 per video, yeah. but I, I'm like an expert at this. I really yeah. know what I'm doing, so I can take a risk that's that higher, but just getting started in YouTube automation, you ain't gotta spend that much. I mean, I don't feel like it's a risk when you saying you could spend even if it's 400 and you saying some people are making 10,000 off of a video, 500, I mean a thousand, 5,000, like and off bro, of a video that you're not even a talent on the video? At all, you ain't even in the video and it's completely passive once you upload it. It's yeah. literally like digital real estate. Yeah. I have a channel that, and it's funny cause you know, Sunday, you usually get paid every month from Google AdSense yeah. on the 21st, but the 21st this month fell on a Sunday. Yeah. And so one of my channels, I looked at it today, I got an email from Google AdSense this morning. It's a channel I ain't uploaded on in probably 11 months, $600. Wow. So once it's, it's almost set it and forget it, once it's up? Yeah, it's, it's up. <laughs> you just keep up, getting paid. Once it's up, it's up. As long as the videos are getting views, as long as your channel's getting views, you're getting paid. Even if I stop the channel? If you stop it, uploading videos today and, you're, and your channel's still getting views, they're going to pay you for those views. Mm. 11 months, bro. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. $600 said, ain't nothing crazy from- a, Oh, but $600 from- That's like real estate money. Yeah. It's passive? digital real estate. Passive, bro. Ooh. You know, it's I love like, passive income, yeah, though. Bro, I got I to get you on this channel, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to do- I'm I, I'm doing me an automation channel. Oh, yeah, you got to help you. build that out. Yeah, yeah, we got so you. we got, you You said something critical. So we talked about building the team. You said what components of the team. You said around, arrange around what the videos cost. 
when you were coaching me, right, and I appreciate you, like, when we really got into YouTube, and it's not the automation way. Nah, this was but, just. No, I'm saying right. when you were coaching me through just niches and right. all these different, you kept pressing on the thumbnail. Yeah. What are some components to a successful thumbnail right now? So you have to understand, number one, that the most important piece of a video is the YouTube thumbnail, mm. all right? And I say this, and I always use this analogy. Nobody's ever going to go into a library, open the middle of a book and start reading. They're going to look at the cover of that, that book and they're going to read the summary on the back. Same with Netflix. I know some people we don't read these days. We watch Netflix. Nobody's just going to go on Netflix and click on a video, bro. Yeah. They got to look at the trailer. They got to read the description and make sure they like it before yeah. they even tap into that, that movie, right? It's the same thing with a YouTube thumbnail. Subconsciously, people see thumbnails on YouTube and they already know in their mind it's made up that they're going to click on it before they even click on it. But... Here's two major key components of a thumbnail. Hey, listen, I am so excited. Like, we had to stop the episode, right? Bro, like, Neil, you stopped in the episode. It's getting so good. I know. This is my YouTube coach. This is the guy who helped analyze our channel, tell us some adjustments we should have made, right? In addition to that, this is the GOAT behind faceless YouTube channels. If anybody know anything about me, your boy loved digital real estate, meaning how can I generate income without me physically showing up to do so? So, and my guy, David Amari, is hosting a five-day virtual conference, ytachallenge.com, sharing with you the step-by-step -step blueprint on not only how you can win on YouTube, but how you can also do it faces, meaning where you don't have to show up to do it. So again, go to ytachallenge.com right now. Join that five-day virtual event. We'll see you in the inside. Let's get back to the episode. Number one, it has to spark curiosity. Mm. Number two, it has to ask a question. Mm. Right. So it can be anything. Right. Let's go back to you. How to start an event space. Right. What if you put on a thumbnail how I made a hundred thousand dollars from an event space in one month. Right. Mm -hmm. And we'll condense that down because we don't want too many words on a thumbnail. Right. What did it just do? It just sparked somebody curiosity who's already been thinking about getting into event spaces. Yeah. So it's going to be more, you know, they're going to really click on it because they're going to see it and they're going to get more interested about tapping in on it. So just those are the two main components. As long as you can spark curiosity and just get people asking questions, yeah. the more people are going to click on it, which is going to increase your click-through rate, which is your CTR, yeah. which is basically the impressions um, and the amount of views you get from those impressions. And that's what gives you that percentage, right? And I told you this before, you want to make sure it's anywhere from seven all the way up to 15%. I mean, it's, if you can get it higher, that's amazing. But typically a really good thumbnail is going to get you 15% plus right? An average thumbnail, probably six to 7%. So yeah. that's something to just really know mm. and keep it, take note of. Yo, so I'm still stuck. I ain't going to hold you. $600 from 11 months ago. My question is this, how often should you be uploading? I'm just sitting here thinking about when we build my channel, go get 50 videos made, yeah. schedule them once a week. Mm -hmm. That's 52 videos. Mm -hmm. That's once a week for a year right. done and just start letting that bread compound. as Exactly. So yeah. the beautiful thing though is it's not really how much you need to upload. It's about how consistent can you put out quality on a schedule, yeah. right? So that's why I told you that once a week is good because yep. you can we, bang we out all that content, that. Yep. bang out all that content, schedule it. You don't miss a week. It's consistent. People are going to start watching your channel like it's a TV show. Mm. They're going to know when you come on. Yep. Now in today's age, you don't have to upload every single day. Like you don't have to burn yourself out like that. But of course, the more you upload, the more you're going to get, you know, more results and things of that nature, because you're always testing. You're always looking at your analytics, seeing what can be made better, what can be done better and just getting better with every single video. Right. So I will always say, like, when it comes to an upload schedule, good to do two to three videos a week, spread out enough to where people can really take that time to watch that video you put out. So they don't feel like, oh, this is spammy unless you're like a celebrity news channel and it's something happening every day. It really all depends on your niche and like what what audience you're in, right? And so when you have your competitors, your competitors really tell you like the best times to upload. Yeah. So like, for example, back when I was heavy in the gaming, I would look at like people that were competitors of my channel mm. and I'd see the highlights when they upload and when they upload and I see they have way more views at a specific time. I'm like, okay, I know I need to upload at this time Yeah. because I know that the search engine is going to rank me at this time, I literally used to like be up, okay, boom, get a video up, 10 a.m. 
I know search engines are going to rank me from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm going to collect all the views of people that search up this topic. And then from there, the next day, it just keeps going on and on because you just start to learn like your audience, your competitors and how your niche really works. And so that's really what it is. Just really studying your audience and understanding when they're watching and when they're looking up your content. That's good. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So what's the next step in this automation process? So we built our team. Mm -hmm. We developed a schedule. Right. Built our team already. We develop a schedule when to actually upload it, right? We already decided on our niche. Right. What's our next step? So the next step is just when you upload those videos, yeah. now you just get all the data from that, yeah. see what is working. Yeah. We typically say anywhere from 20 to 30 videos, you'll start to see what's really popping on your channel. As soon as you get at least five to 10 videos that you know is hot, double down on that and keep pushing it. Yeah. So now it's just trying to figure out, okay, what's hot on my channel? Once you see what's hot on your channel, then you double down on that content and just keep on rinsing and repeating the play over and over and over again. So you got to be consistent. You got to. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a no brand. Like you have to be consistent. And I and I always see a lot of like creators, they they get the million view video and they just looking at it like it's a trophy. Yeah. Just admiring it. Right. Yeah. And they're like, man, I got to I got to I got to you know, what I'm saying they're trying to figure out the best way to do it again. But, you know. I always tell people this, your channel is never dead. The only time your channel is dead is the day you stop uploading on it. Mm. So you just got to keep going, bro. Like, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like that consistency really pays off. But make sure you're consistently doing something right. You want to be, you don't want to be consistently doing things wrong because that yeah. just can lead to no good results. Can you buy a channel already cooking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's markets out there. I've sold channels out there. Okay. Like, I literally sold a channel for like 103000 mm. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was it wasn't even making that much. Like, but when you get a channel that's projected to do X, Y, and Z, you can really sell it. I've seen channels that's making six thousand dollars a month going for like three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, bro. It's it's that's a whole nother industry, like wow. flipping and selling channels. Channel. Ooh. Hmm. So let me talk about it because what you and I, I look at you like a YouTube guy, right? You do all the automation, but I don't want to do automation. Right. Right. Meaning I'm just I'm doing automation, right, right? Right. But I'm saying you got we got people looking at this interview who's influencers, who's coaches, who's consultants. What are some things that they need to be doing right now to make their channel better? I remember at our mastermind, you came gave a craziest presentation yeah. on like an hour just on what we needed to do to get our YouTube right. pop, and that really helped us yeah. launch our YouTube, get our consistent schedule, do all the thumbnails. What's some other things that influencers, coaches, consultants should be doing other than the first step is if you are watching this and you are not on YouTube, yeah. get on YouTube. And the reason why I say it, number one is what you got to really understand when it comes to the YouTube game is once you put the content up once, it lives forever. When I go Instagram live, nobody's going back to go look at it. Mm -mm. If, I, if my post is buried 30 posts ago, no one's going to go look at it, right? And here's another thing. I saw somebody that say, yo, this video was doing at like 30,000 followers. 30,000 views a year later it went up to like 250,000 views out yeah. of nowhere yeah so and, and just to speak to that with coaches consultants influencers you want to in your industry you just want to make sure you're hitting on the like the basic topics in your industry mm. right I love to use a credit business credit niche how to build business credit is yeah. still a like a, a thing that people just don't know about facts so what if you went on YouTube and you've just created a simple video, right? You had a crazy nice thumbnail talking about business credit, right? And even if you approach it in a different way, what if you ask a question, right? Make those topics that way when people come and tap in with you, then they know, okay, this is somebody in this industry that's killing it. Because it's so many coaches, consultants, influencers that's not using YouTube. It's like, a, it's like, it's literally a huge, like... Uh, blue boom. ocean or is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a blue ocean, yeah. bro. It's like yeah, it's, it's like people literally can go on there and just create so much content about their industry. Give all your stuff away from free. I learned that from you. Yeah. Give everything yeah. that you know away for free, yep. right? Because then you're going to grow people. You're going to have people that trust you, like you, and of course, they're going to know you because you're going to teach them things and stuff like that. But just to speak to that, what you said earlier, somebody had 30,000 views that blew up in a year. I had a video do that. I had a video hit like 5,000 views and it was like in November... Uh, 2019, right? I didn't look at it. 2020, I think that video, I think it's currently sitting at a million views, but in 2020, it went from that 5,000 views to like 800,000 views. Wow. It's evergreen, wow. right? It's always going to be searched up. And just to speak to what you said again, like people, you can't look up certain things on Instagram, right? So if you can look it up on YouTube, that just tells you, okay, I know people in my industry are looking this up, 
right? And here's a gym right here. Instead of you just try and make your own titles and you don't really know how to do so, why not search up a question on the search engine that's in your industry, right? For example, if I searched up business credit, you're probably gonna see like five, 10 topics pop up. What is business credit? How to check your business credit score? All these just generic general topics, yeah. right? Copy those questions and just make it your title. Mm. Because people are going to look it up anyway. That's literally yeah. showing you the most popular topics is being searched up wow. on that. Now, so. I remember you told me, you said, so event space was the main thing. Right. And I broke it down. And then you broke it down. So so you're saying every influencer or whoever, business credit, pick your topic right. and break it, down break it down into as many videos. Sub niches as, as you can, because okay. what you're going to do is you're going to approach it from a broad aspect at first. Once you approach it from that broad aspect, you're gonna bring in all the people that are super interested in it. Yeah. Guess what? You get that one video that pops off, YouTube's gonna start recommending that content to other people that are that are likely to watch that video and the same people that watched the previous video, right? So while you're breaking down all those sub niches, now you wanna start talking about like the nitty and gritty about your industry. And that's just gonna help you, number one, yeah. be someone that they see in this industry as an authority, yeah. right? And they're going to trust you like you would know you, which means they're going to spend money with you. Yeah. Right. And it's just a really big, like, if you if you were in that industry right now, there's so much opportunity to sell your programs and whatever you have to sell on autopilot. Yeah. Just from having a video up on YouTube. Yeah. Right. Because it's, it's, it's never a time where it turns off. It's ongoing. Do you recommend automation channels and personal brand channels? Or yeah. do you, foc of course, focus on one at a time? Or what do so, you... For, for me, I personally, I just, I was just ramping and running. I do it all. I got a personal brand channel, but I always say, focus on your breadwinner. Yeah. If your breadwinner is YouTube automation, go with it, right? If your breadwinner is your brand, your personal brand, go with it. It's really hard to focus on multiple channels if you're just not an expert in that lane yet. It takes time. I usually tell people, once you get that first 10,000 subscribers, now it's time to start thinking about making another channel and getting those followers that really love you on that channel yeah. to support your other channel, mm. right? How now, you do that? Like, what is Simple. You make a video. At the end of the video, your call to action is, hey, I actually created a channel. You know, I know I talk about business credit on this channel, but I actually created a channel that talks about, you know, building your LLC up or, or whatever that topic may be. Yeah. Something that's similar to it, but just a really strong pivot, yeah. right? And the people that really rock with you, they're going to tap into the other one. Yeah. I mean, what's some ways to grow subs, bro? It seems like that's one of the... Man. YouTube seems like it's the hardest platform it's to really grow bottom, subs. Man. Like, in terms of Instagram, there's certain things you could do. YouTube, for me, mm -hmm. it ain't that sweet. Yeah, so so with some strategy back when I was younger, stuff? younger and more of a, you know, just trying to do anything to get subscribers, we leveraged giveaways. That yep. was like the biggest way. Like you get a video blow up, you get like I had somebody get like 100,000 subscribers, right? And I had got like 20,000 subscribers from a video leveraging a giveaway because, you know, you get a little gift card. Say, hey, I got this gift card. You want it? You know, like, sub. Cool, right? These days, we don't do that. We want to just leverage the great content. That was something we did back in the day. But really just asking for them to subscribe or really incentivizing in that. Like, for example, uh, I'll use your niche again, event spaces, right? Hey, make sure you subscribe if you want to learn how to scale and build your event space. Give them a reason to subscribe, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? They're going to subscribe if they see the reason too. But you always have to ask them to do it. Like, yeah. if you don't ask, you don't receive. Facts. So that's Got just it. a big thing. And incentivizing it. If you want to do a giveaway, you can do that. I wouldn't say spam that because most people do. They spam giveaways and it's not the best thing to do because it just gives you an audience of people that just want free stuff. Yeah. But yeah. every once in a while, you throw one out there and say, hey, like I'm doing this for, you know, the next few couple subscribers. Yeah. If you want to, you know, get in on it, subscribe and we can choose you and it'll show you who subscribed to your channel if it's public. Let me ask you. So one of the things we do, we always talk about leveraging other people's audience and other people's stages. Yeah. I go find people that got 100K subs, 500K subs. How can I get them to mention me and get subs from them? Do I pay them for you can mention? Like, how can I basically they got 500,000 views? Mm -hmm. Do I sponsor the video? Like, what can I do to pretty really much just yeah. get their audience? So yeah. number one, just speak to the creator. Say, hey. You're getting a lot of traction. I'd love to grow my audience from your audience. How can we work together, right? Networking is key. Just openly asking them, right? Then another way I've been doing it lately, and then I'm doing this with YouTube automation, but we like leverage community tabs. Yeah. So on YouTube, there's this community tab where you can literally have a community post go up where I mm. pay a channel that's in my niche, and we're doing this on my NBA channel right now. 
I pay a channel that's in my niche that's killing it to post a uh, like a, a thumbnail or just my video link in general, and it drives their audience to my channel because it's a very similar audience. So and the community tab is that like uh like a group message? Nah, that's just on the feed. Like you you can go on somebody's channel, slide over, you know where you see videos, homepage, and all that stuff. Okay. If you keep going, you'll see community tab, and it's where people post on the community. Sometimes you'll see people doing like polls. And it's not open. the comment section. No, it's not the okay. comment section, but it has a comment section attached to it. Mm, okay. So that's another way, you know, you can leverage OPA. It's almost like a shout out, but yeah. it's not really because it shows on the person's sub feed when they go, like when their audience goes on YouTube, they're going to be scrolling. They're going to see that pop up on their subscriber feed. So that's the way to do it. And also just getting in that video and just saying, yo, can I ask people to come over here, yeah. check me out and subscribe? Or can you tell your audience because they trust you, they like you and they know you and they're going to do whatever you say to do. Yeah. So that's another way to do it. What what are we paying a, a a YouTuber for something like that? So for a community post, it depends. Um, I like to go, and this is like me just finessing the game, but I like to go to channels because there's a way you can see if a channel's monetized or not. Yeah. So I know if a channel's making money or not. Yeah. If they're not making money, I can like, hey, I, for two hundred dollars, can you throw me on a community tab? For fifty dollars, can you throw me on a community tab? Mm. I know they're gonna take it because they're not making any money. Why wouldn't they be monetized though? Because they're not doing it correctly. Some people don't mm, know what they're doing. That's why they need the coach. <laughs> some people don't know. Some people will go and rip NBA clips, put it on their channel and think, oh, it got a million views. I'm about to make a lot of money. No, the NBA is going to come for that. Like you didn't transform it. You didn't, mm. you know, you didn't do the things that needs to transform the content to make sure you can actually use, use that content, content without being, having copyright issues. Wow. And so there's channels like that, that got all these NBA clips <laughs> that's not monetized. And I'm monetized because I got my NBA stuff going crazy. So I just jump on their channel because I'm like, they got the views. Yeah. They got the audience. I'm and I'm I know they ain't got the money. So let me just, you know, add that piece to that puzzle. And now I just kind of hacked your audience because I know you need the money and I know I need the audience. So mm. that's a play play though. That's like Ooh. that's dangerous. I like I gotta break that down. Yeah. Cause it's that, a whole yeah. it's a whole way to do it. How do I identify if they monetize or not? It's a it's a key thing. It's 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 a keyboard thing. Like okay. Almost like, you know, like inspect element is something like that. Like okay. you got to click. I don't even know what the keys are. I got to get my laptop. But yeah. you click a specific key. And I think I actually did a reel on this. You click a specific key and then you type in monetization enable and it'll tell you if it's enabled or it's not. Ooh, that's good. So because I need to just create a list of all these YouTubers I need to go after because I feel like YouTube, bro. That's why if you're not on YouTube, I feel like it's still a gold mine mm -hmm. because most people aren't on YouTube because you got to be good at doing video unless yeah. you're doing an automation way. Where you but ain't. it doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. they're still not on there either way. Right. So it's like now I feel like it's still a good time to really connect with influencers, right? Yeah. And just really yeah. get oh, going. Oh, yeah. A thousand yeah. percent. That's that's always just a big thing to do. Yeah. Just growing and expanding your network. Yeah. yeah. Right? What's some other things right now working for YouTube that's like, yo, y'all, if, if whether one for automation and one for personal brands, some things that people need to be doing right now. For both in general shorts shorts okay they pushing that thing to the yeah. moon and TikTok. How, many, how many a day or a week uh, how often should so you do a i usually say schedule it alongside with your long form so if you got a long form this is personally what i do there's so many different strategies on how to post shorts but personally this yeah. is what i do i'll put up the long form video two hours later i'll upload a short and then i'll have it connected to that long form video so people see a snippet and they're like okay I gotta watch the whole video now. Mm. Then they go tap into it. That's my personal way of doing it. I've seen success from it, but there's so many different strategies on how you can really blow up from the shorts, right? I got this friend, um, they do YouTube, you've probably heard of them. Uh, Love, Live, Serve, really big, big platform, big channel, right? They took their channel, he, I think he said they took their channel from like 4 million to almost 10 million subscribers just off shorts alone. Wow. Yeah, bro, so super powerful. And they a personal brand, they not even an automation channel. Wow. Yeah. Four million subs to 10 million. And it was in a shorts. year, bro. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. And shorts just crazy. came out. It'd been about a year maybe mm -hmm. with some shorts. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely a play right there that's really working like mm. right now. Yeah. Um, and just always was always gonna work. It's just relevancy. Yeah. Understanding a time and place, almost like a solar eclipse when the moon and the sun, they can just the same thing. There's gonna be moments in time that you're gonna see that's gonna happen where you're gonna see an opportunity to literally get on the platform and leverage that moment, Yeah. right? So it's always gonna be topics like that. And if you can figure out a way to pivot it, like I always tell people, if you, just take for example, if you go on the shade room right now or Hollywood Unlocked, these big pages, right? And you take the biggest, most popular story from that page, 
you go and give it to your automation team and tell them to make a video about it, right? It could be about Kim Kardashian, Kanye, whatever it may be. Yeah. And you're in the celebrity niche. Then have them put that video on your channel. It's going to get views. Yeah. If it's the number one talked about thing on the shade room right now, and you throw it on YouTube in a YouTube automation form, it's going to get views. Mm. That's like almost guaranteed. Yeah. So that's just like a way of like- It's like trend surfing, right? Trend Finding. surfing, relevancy hacking, like just yeah. knowing what's relevant. How do you find, are you just looking online for relevant stuff? Probably, I'll be going in deep, bro. Yeah. Like I study channels. Um, one of my plays that I do, that you actually got to see how I do it because it's just, it's so saucy, like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I do is I go on the YouTube search engine and I put the, um, I put it on video, right? And then I break it down to this month, yeah, right? And if it's, I just put in a topic in the search engine, break it down to this month, search by four to 20 minutes and then filter it to, um, not relevancy, I filter it to view count. It shows me the most viewed videos in the last month in that specific niche or topic. Mm. And I just make a list of the videos from the channels that have less subscribers than they have views. Yeah. I may see a video, I may see a channel that got 2 million views in the last three weeks, but they may have 5 million subscribers, right? Yeah, that's a beautiful video, but I can't gauge if those views came from their subscribers or it came from YouTube just pushing it. Mm. So when I see a channel that got like 200,000 subscribers and they got 3 million views in the last two weeks, I'm like, oh, they doing something right. Yeah. This topic hot. Mm. It's relevant. Let me add this to my list and go crazy. I feel like I need to ask somebody on my team that's just searching topics that I need to just do research. that's in my niche. You know, niche. you know, Shans was telling me, he was like, he was like, yo, David, like, who do I hire to do research? I said, bro, yeah. honestly, to this day, I do the research. Like, yeah. it's just because it's just in can me. you like, create a formula to show people how to yeah, do research? Yeah, I, I know I can do it. Okay. I know I can create it. I, we'll if create I'm not that. I need already. that because I need somebody on our team. To, just uh, to know, like, how to. Yeah. Trend hack and, and relevancy hack just to know. Yeah, because yeah. that's, I mean, that can make your channel go crazy. Go crazy, like, just mm. go crazy, bro. Yeah. That's a play for real. That's yeah, that's a major play right there. That was major. Hey, ne next, I think we're going to make this part one. You got to come back and bring the laptop. We're going to go over my channel. Yeah. We're going to go over the 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 automation channel we're going to create and really right. go in, man. But yeah. uh, get, get a, maybe before we wrap, Get a people a couple mistakes they need to avoid. Like I know, mistakes. like, mm. like, cause I know they're gonna get in this game. They're not gonna have a coach, or they're gonna try to figure out. They're gonna make some mistakes that could possibly be avoided. What's some of those mistakes you would share? One or two. So I'll share two. One for automation and one for traditional. Yep. So for automation, you want to make sure when you're hiring people that you do a trial run with them. Mm, that's good. Give them something to to test, so for a video editor, I'm just gonna use that for example. Say, hey, I like this video also on YouTube. Can you do a 15 to 30 second you know, trial clip and show me that you can do it just like this instead of paying them for the whole video and then they can't get it done, right? So ask them for some type of trial, right? And then they'll give it to you. If you like what you see, you know to hire that person, okay? Now for, tra for traditional YouTubers, people that are showing their face, I'm always gonna go back to consistency. I know it's hard to pick up that camera sometimes, but it's gonna pay off if you stay consistent and you just constantly putting that content out, constantly just keeping up and doing your research on your competitors, knowing what's working, stay on top of that, stay consistent, and you're gonna be on the next level. But that's the major mistake I see with two, two of those people. One, they literally just hire anybody without even giving them a trial run. And people that's doing traditional YouTube, they do one video and then for like six months, seven months, they don't do another one and then they give up completely. So don't make those mistakes. You're gonna be on the right path. Bro, you gave so much game, but I know, cause we talk privately on YouTube all the time. You yeah. helped us, like you you coached us through it. Yeah. Um, but I, I wanna bring back the laptop. I wanna go over my, my own automation channel. I want you to do some more coaching on my channel live. Yeah. So we gonna make this a part one, bro. But I know, um, you got a challenge coming up, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, where you're yeah. gonna literally be showing people this game. Yeah. And, and I know you got some big people that's gonna be a part of that that really help people go crazy. Go crazy. So I want you to just tell the people how they could tap in with you, bro, and uh, get tapped in with that. So we are doing a five day challenge, man. I can't even believe I'm doing this. Um, yeah. Allowing people to spend five days with me is definitely something I've never done before, but I'm super excited because I know how much impact people are gonna get out of me spending five days with them. So. Um, we're doing a YouTube automation challenge. It's going to be five days at the end of July. 
Um, and the beautiful thing about it is, you know, you could tap into it right now. I know Neil's going to have the link in the description, but it's ytachallenge.com or youtubeautomationchallenge.com. But it's going to be amazing. People are going to come. You know, I always like to say this, man. Future millionaires will be made. Because mm. the game that I'm giving is it's so, it's so yeah. subtle. Nobody really knows about YouTube so automation. So what you just right? gave was light, huh? That was, oh. <laughs> you didn't get in your bag of tricks, huh? Nah, nah. I got, yeah. I, hey, hey. You know, that, you know what they say, man. You yeah. never run out of gyms. So yeah. I definitely got unlimited amounts yeah. of game to give. But I will say the challenge is going to be. Like, I'm giving my all. I'm an open book. Yeah. Like, my deepest, darkest tricks and yeah. tips, like, yeah. is going to come out on that challenge. So, yeah. definitely tap in. Bro, and I, what, I, what I'm excited about the most, which I've literally been thinking about, it, is real estate. Like, all I'm thinking right. about now is how do I create real estate in so many different ways? Exactly. And this is a form, like, just the $600, of le I'm, to a lot of people looking, 600 may not be a lot, but $600 that I, I, created a video for $50 11 months ago and made 600 and then may make another 600 in it. That is a property to me. It's a property. That's a rental property Bro, that will live on real estate. And YouTube ain't going anywhere anytime soon. No, sir. So I'm, I'm excited, man. So if y'all looking at this video, man, make sure y'all tap in, man. YTAchallenge.com, you said? Sir, YTAchallenge.com. Yeah, make sure you guys get tapped in so y'all can learn the strategies and the tricks. Like, And here's the thing. Y'all going to follow, y'all going to watch me do this journey myself. When y'all see my automation channel pop, let me ask you, is that a thing I keep secret or do I share people my channel once it's up? I don't know how that works. You know? I personally never reveal my channels okay. because if I do, people just going to go and rip everything that I'm doing because I'm like the forefront of this industry. Got it. Okay. So, All right. I, I mean, you so I may, I'm, I may, I may not share yeah. my channel, but I want y'all to really see the journey of how this get built out. For one, for you to see that you could do the same thing as well. And the best thing is that he practicing what he preach, y'all. Literally building these channels out and showing you how to do it. So YTAchallenge.com, y'all. Make sure we tap in. Let them know where they can follow you on social. Definitely tap in with me on Instagram at David Omari with the blue check. Okay? That's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> so facts. tap in. That's my Instagram. And I'm also on YouTube at David Omari as well with another verification check. So yeah. verified on all platforms. So definitely tap in. Let's get it, y'all. We see y'all in the next episode. Let's go.